to another YouTube video. It is your girl Blend Away, and there's absolutely no way without going through the third way. So I'm back again with another video. As you can tell by today's title and the sound of my voice, I'm going to be sharing my testimony. Yes, the whole journey. Like I'm generally going to break it down for you in the set in this episode of Holy Perspective. So yeah, um, so what I'm going to do is I realize that if I'm going to share my testimony, I have to first make this disclaimers. Um, number one, I am going to share things here that if you knew me when I was still in the world, when I was still lukewarm, when I was still not invested in my faith as I am now, you might think that... Um, no man it's not even what you would think it's about like that's not the Marilyn I know duh I am a different Marilyn every single time every single day I am a new person so I change I go right so that's the first thing um and I'm gonna mention some very like intimate like not necessarily intimate man why I'm like vulnerable I'm gonna get really vulnerable with you guys because um okay, um so i had to stop and pray because like i was having a difficult time to um like you know share it so yeah like i was still saying like just a disclaimer that i will say things that um might not agree with your values might not agree with what christianity looks for you or might not agree with how you think whatsoever but this is my perspective this is how god has been in my life and this is my testimony and no one can argue with my testimony because you were not there so yeah i'm gonna divide it into well depending on the length of this one i might divide it into three different parts so part one i'm just going to discuss my upbringing and yeah and all of that so i'm not going to get into the deeper details of like you know my faith journey like generally like my faith because my faith journey is in the previous video i decided to start with that video i'm gonna link it i'm gonna put an eye somewhere i don't know which side it's gonna be on but yeah that's my that's my faith journey video and in that video i describe my journey through faith with god and how i was raised in a household that believed in jesus my grandmother raised me and all of those other things so um i think i should start where it all started so i was raised in a household like i said my grandmother was the one that raised me i raised in a, i was raised in a household that i assumed so much traumatic experiences um in such a way that there was never a constant caregiver in the house um there was so many dynamic shifts so there was a time my grandmother had to leave us and to take care of my sisters because i was in the village and my sisters were in Joburg with my mom and you know like all of that so they were we were in a different space so my sisters i only knew my sisters when they're three years old i don't know my mother until i was six years old so i didn't i had not seen her physically i had like i i think i only had pictures of my mom and i don't think I, I don't remember seeing any of them but i remember that she used to take care of like financially she was there but on the sense of her being a caregiver and being present for me she wasn't so i faced a lot of um i grew up very quickly really i grew up very fast there were times where i would be left in the house to take care of like i was five years by the way this is me at age five at age five i would was taking care of um I don't I don't think my mom actually was aware of that but like at age five yes there was a time I was left alone in the house to take care of my younger cousin who was just a year younger than me which means she was four years old and then um, my aunt at that time that was supposed to be taking care of us left us with her younger child and her youngest child at that time was around one year or something like that because I remember cooking porridge I remember getting hurt I remember like those were just like just some of some some examples of the traumatic things I went through as a child. So I grew up with this in it like anger, in anger. I was really frustrated. I was really angry. I was hurt internally. Like I I I, I couldn't trust. I um I was just I lost hope in human beings because everybody leaves. My father left. 
um, so I had abandonment uh, I was abandoned by my father so since my father abandoned me so the story behind that was my mom ran away like I didn't even know that until I was in grade 11 that my mom ran away um, from spiritual attachments that my dad had because they had um initiated me without her knowledge so there was like so the, the um this is very explicit though but yeah warning it's explicit so um when i was young like it was just recently like a newborn like you know when you go back to the house so my mom was by my father's place and then so my grandmother uh practiced like amadlozi which is ancestral spirit um she practiced like my grandmother from the dead side was into all of those things so my father i don't know what where his standpoint was on because i never really got to have a conversation about that but like so my mom based off what she told me she says that there was like that exact night when she came back with me she was sleeping and i was in the crib so they my one of my aunts came and took me and she couldn't move or oh, like she tried screaming but her voice was not coming out and she doesn't know till this day where they took me like um and i i i also didn't know where they took me i mean i was young but like um so that spiritual attachment has always been carried with me um since that day like since that time and it came like it was so my mom was very resentful towards me and i think that's also another thing that goes back to that spiritual attachment um my mom was very resentful i felt rejected by her i grew up very angry and very very i was not i was very very frustrated and i didn't like i didn't have a childhood growing up i i was constantly in books constantly um in hiding of like like because I didn't receive love, I was not receiving receiving affection, I was really never, so psychologically, the logical explanation was um, uh, emotional abuse, so that was the definition I had, and growing up, I would have suicidal thoughts, I would want to kill myself, I had attempts of doing it, there were times when like people would actually like walk in on me, almost killing myself, and those were and there were times like because self-harm was never really in my mind but there were there were days i would think about it i would like i was haunted by these thoughts of like kill yourself everything would be better i would write letters to my father write letters to god pleading to him trying to understand because i like so this ancestral spirit had me thinking that it like it like yeah it really was tormenting me and like it, like I think it is the one that caused the the resentment from my mom. Like it drew me apart and it made sure that everything I did, even if it was good things, it would stink in my mom's eyes. So, like, being in a household where I there's just way too many kids, I and being the middle child of them of 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 it all caused even way more commotion around like all of those things. So, like. So that spirit just really um it it had me in such torment to a point that i thought that like if i had known my father or if my father it had taken me because every time that was the thing that was constantly in my mind like why doesn't my father come take me why doesn't my father come take me and i used to sleepwalk and when i would sleepwalk i would see these um visions of this woman um caring like who like i, I couldn't see her clearly but i could see that it's it's a woman and this woman is like leading me somewhere and asking me to come along with her and then every Every time there was a barrier like every single time like I I was I um, I started sleepwalking at the age of five um, that's when everything started like it was like I needed so my grandmother obviously was a prayerful woman she would pray for me and I once also was in a room with a person like I slept next to someone and they woke up dead the next day um, and then like obviously like so I kept like as, as a young child I kept collecting spirits and I just kept collecting them kept collecting them and i did not know that i was because what did i know about spirits at that point um so that continues to happen and 
I'm I'm growing up this very angry, this frustrated person, like this, like I was, I hated everything, like it's like, I had so much anger, at the same time, there was this love, like I had this inner love for people, that I couldn't understand, why I love people so much, but people damage me so much so i grew up with this i wanna like this like in like I, I was i had a very insecure attachment with my parents and i just wanted love i wanted affection and i was willing to go out there and find that affection for myself if i was not going to get it from the household i was in and at home there were times where uh, there was physical abuse, um, alcohol, substance abuse. Like you can imagine all of these things. I am literally a child and um, I would like, <laughs> I would protect my sisters from seeing it than myself. So I didn't realize the, the impact it was having on me to see physical abuse, to experience it and not talk about it. Because there was no one else I could like say that this is what's going on at home. No one ever asked me those questions. I would go to church and like a church, like my, like I created a facade. That's, that's one thing I can say. I, I had a facade of this happy person, this person that has, has it all together, this person that is always, you know, constantly just seems perfect it's like God is blessing her every single time and there were times I felt like that but then 95% of the time I was really going through all these things that I didn't want to talk about and um, so I never was really like I I had a, a shallow vulnerability I would convince you that I'm being vulnerable and at that time I really wasn't I was really not even close to vulnerability and that grew with me man like it grew with me and like so during the whole time like obviously when i came so with me what combated or slowed down the effectiveness of the ancestral spirit that was impacted on my life or that was planted and in, to into my life without my permission that's the problem with those familiar spirits is that they come into our lives without our permission so um I came to start living with my mom. My mom used to go to this church, like Twelve Apostles Church of Christ. Uh, so Twelve Apostles, they would like they knew about the Holy Spirit, like they they do, like they taught me a lot about the Holy Spirit actually. So they would have like um, prophecies for me, and every time it always linked back to there is this grandmother, there is your father's side. There were there was always those like information that was always coming about with regards to that and that always just con constantly made me even more fearful it was yeah i became more fearful to explore to do things i i was like and my mom ha had me so restricted in the in the house like i would only stay in the house um she she controlled my friends she controlled who came into my life she was very very overprotective i think with her she thought she was protecting me but then she was harming me in a way without her knowing that she's doing so so that was the first aspect, right? And yeah, I think, let me now talk about the, so the answer to spirit is gonna be part one. Um, so the first time it really started creaking and coming out that the, the spirit is acting up was by around the time I was in grade 11 and 12. So this one is also related to my sexual um, immorality stage, which I'll also speak about in the next video. So I won't go into deeper detail here, but just know that I was going through some things um, adolescently and like the effectiveness and like the the desensitized of like how desensitized I was with certain things I was doing. And so like, so all of that trauma had me in the cycle of being in shallow relationships of being like shallow relationships of being even friendships because i couldn't hold a friendship for a very long time because i couldn't trust people to get that close to me and i had a speaking um difficulty and i know it's unbelievable because now i speak so clearly you would swear i don't have a starter so i had a starter i don't know if it's still there but if even if it is god cured it and it's gone so um i had a starter growing up so i would faced a lot of humiliation embarrassment like public humiliation i would cry in front of people and like 
school was the only place I was like school and church were the only place I found solitude like I, I, I found myself very very loved I found well like I would find areas to receive that love even though I would feel alone sometimes I would feel like I don't fit in I don't like I'm so different from all these people I felt resentment towards everyone that tried to show me love and that was just the first aspect of it and it was really not nice it was really not pretty it was not something I had imagined I would be going through and I didn't understand all the reasons why I was going through it so that continues to be like a continual process and something that continues to torment me like it tormented me throughout my like life until like recently like it's been it was just always there like yeah you will never be a good speaker you are just a joke you can't even speak properly like those words that were being planted into my life that i partnered with at that time very very like they negatively affected me like even with sharing my faith it took me so long to share my faith because i was receiving so much backlash from people that you know when that i considered to be some very close friends about sharing my faith so openly and just being like listen this is jesus this is how this is how he has been to me so like it took a it was a very gradual process so those prophecies that keep coming out um those prophecies that i wouldn't make it to metric without a child actually i was not even supposed to get to metric um, even during my metric year, I was supposed to get raped. Like there was like these like there was these prophecies that were very very intense. That if I wasn't in God, right? If I wasn't in God, I would have. It would have been worse. I would have faced so much. I would have um, faced way more things than I already had at that point. Like I would have been. I would have felt. A, assault i would have been assaulted i would have been i would have lost a lot of things so that spirit was like you know like it pushes you to like it wants you to ruin your life so that like it gets to a point where it's un unrepairable or it looks like no one can re like it's beyond repair and that was like the 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 drawing line so like i had like my pasta so my pasta from back home also like defeated an ancestral spirit so um he had like just said since like i had not partnered with it it hadn't it, it, it hadn't like you know taken a hold of me because i i was more on god's side i like i continued to strengthen my my spirit but during my adult like what's this thing my high school years my my spirit was not that strong I was really like you know I, w I only knew the basics touch there touch there go there you know I was still trying to fit in trying to make friends and that impacted on like the amount of effect it had on my life so like I continued man being very angry being very very frustrated like it was really really painful and only just recently I was freed of that spirit um, it was a very very um, interesting experience like I was like after some like after so long it's been 18 years leaving with something that is not you but it's in you and you didn't know what to like how to deal with it and because when it happened when i was free from it like i could feel like that there was something in me that wasn't me i could feel that like there is a new like there's a new light in my eyes i knew i was saved i knew god has always been doing all these beautiful things but like i didn't know that i had not healed i had not been saved from that spirit and when that happened like it literally just happened just saturday and it was beautiful and i really like i really appreciate what god did for me and because even when I look in retrospect of like my entire life, I could have died so many times. I could have killed myself so many times because life got really hard and I got really, got really frustrated. Like my mom couldn't understand what I was saying. My mom couldn't get me. I was trying to reach out to people, but people didn't understand what I was going through. And God did. He understood what I was going through. <laughs> he was there. He provided people. To be with me in those times.
made sure that even when I was in the toughest and thickest of darkest of times, there was someone that I could, there was just always someone. I remember this vividly because I used to have teachers in my school that would care so much for me and I didn't understand why. And I would just be asking myself, how can one individual have so much love for someone that they don't know? That, like, he always provided, like, there was always someone, and he, he, he. God was just always so beautiful to me, that even when, like, his mercy and his grace in my life was, was beyond me, because I would still be, like, especially, like, when I was in high school, like, I would still be sinning, like, no one's business, like, I would be sinning knowing very well what I'm doing. I knew what was going on, and he just cared for me. He just said, come, my child, I will endorse you, I will protect you, I will give you all these prophecies, I will get people to pay on you, I will get people to pay with you, I will get people to pay for you, and to cover you, and to protect you and to be with you in this difficult time and that's exactly what he did that's exactly what God did in my life he he was there he was present he he watched over me and like there was always someone really like he, there was always someone that even like in those times I uh, was not like there were th like there was a time though when there was literally no one I could talk to you and I would go into the bathroom at home and cry and praying and just like god why me like why should i be the one that's rejected why should i be like i had like why me why me why me and in like the more we, i grew older i realized that my brother and i were going through the same thing in the house so i started having someone to talk to in the house and it was it really made like it, it lightened my burden like ecclesiastic says that like two is better than one and it really did lighten my burden and ah oh, my teachers they were the best because they they pushed me like i remember yeah definitely because my grade seven um teacher was she passed away recently i remember when she passed away i was really i was really hurt because like that woman did a lot in my speaking she she didn't know the amount of impact she had on my speaking as as a teacher and even like my grade six teacher like they they all saw something i didn't see in myself they didn't see like i because I, I couldn't see that i had the capacity to to even like speak like because I would, I would stutter every single word. Do you know what the enemy does? He he had closed off my speech because he knew that that is where my destiny is held. That is where God wants me to be, to be his mouthpiece into the world. And he closed that off and he made sure that I can never speak. I can never say anything. And oh my God, this is just all. And God had a plan. God said, I will, I see, you see the things Joseph's story in the Bible, that's how I always see myself in my life. It's like God allowed for me to go through all of those things because he had a purpose for it. Like every suffering that God allowed us to go through, he had a purpose for it. And that had a purpose and its purpose was to push me. So that, that spirit tried like it really tried but i got back the victory because god has the victory and he has made in he's, he's made me i am joined heirs do you understand i am like it just like it always blows my mind how like god loved us so much that he knew that we can't do this life then alone he sent his son to die for our sins because our flesh will always sin because that's its nature and then he just went and then when he dies it's like no man i'm not gonna leave you guys alone i'm gonna leave you with the holy spirit and that man the holy spirit was the one that was with me throughout the journey like god never for, like god was with me throughout that aspect of my life he was with me through every single step every single moment that when i moved and i was in tears my tears never fell in vain because 
obviously I had thoughts of I am so gonna kill that woman if I ever you know like I had all these negative things in my mind and they just kept fueling fueling the anger fueling the anger and I used to have like I would bust in anger like and okay I think that I'm gonna explain about that in the next segment so when I talk about the deadly sins I was attached to so but right now it's just the spirit itself like and what it did in my life and now i'm i am like i'm completely free of, free from it i say this with like like the greatest amount of confidence i am completely free from it because god has taken the like he freed me and i felt like the burden being lifted off me because there was a time i think i was in grade 11 um because obviously I, I i was like no yeah girl around grade 11 I, I was carrying all this unforgiveness towards my mother you know i was like towards my family towards everyone because i i was like emotionally abused in that household so i carry that level of unforgiveness so what happened then like at that encounter like that unforgiveness was lifted off me right i yeah I had I, I I had forgiven, but I had not healed. And now, because like even like me speaking about my testimony, like the way there were parts where, um, if you had asked me, uh, last year, I was gonna tell you in full on tears the whole thing, but now it's like I can actually have a conversation about it, and not feel pierced and like, cause when I when I would talk about it, it felt like I was really opening a wound. But right now, there's literally, it's just a scar. And you know that you can't reopen scars. So I have all these scars and they're so beautiful because they are, like, they're evidence of God in my life. Yeah, they're evidence of God in my life. And that is my testimony. And yeah, that's just the first aspect of it. I really, I want to keep those videos very short, but I know very well that they are not going to be short because I, I don't keep quiet because I like while I'm saying my testimony, there's something that always keeps coming up. This happens every time I'm, I'm ever asked to, to share a testimony about anything. So like God, like I see, generally I live in testimonies every single day of my life. Like that's my belief. It's like God wants us to testify about his goodness in our lives and he wants people to know that. And that's why um, after a long time, because this was like a very spiritual conviction that God put it dip, like deposit in, in my spirit that i need to share my my testimony unfiltered and un, un, unedited and all of that so that is exactly what you're going to get this is part one see you guys in the next video that i'm probably going to upload the next day of this shoot but yeah thank you for watching holy perspective bye don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel